Happy anniversary, Cartoon Network. You've given us so many amazing television programs over the years, it would be impossible for us to thank you for each and every one of them. From iconic shows like Ed, Ed and Eddie to Adventure Time, from hit movies such as Secret of the Omnitrix and Operation Zero, and even some of your programming blocks like Toonami, Maguzi, Har Har Thursdays, Fry Dynamite. Y'all remember Fry Dynamite? <laughs> Video coming soon. There were just so many options I could have chosen to celebrate their 30th anniversary, even though I am a bit late. Cartoon Network's catalog is among the very best when it comes to TV shows, and there's an unlimited supply of content that could be made from them. But you know what? I don't care about any of them. I mean, obviously I do, but like, I have no interest in covering some of those popular shows. Nah. Instead, let's talk about the show they made that only lasted six episodes. The cult classic, mind-blowing, critically acclaimed game show known as Brain Rush. Not to be confused with Brain Surge, that, that's a completely different game show. Let's take it all the way back to 2009. The year Shawty was fire burning, the year Shawty was a melody in Ayaz's head, but most importantly, the year Cartoon Network launched CN Real. We all know what this block is at this point. Multiple people have made videos on it and how bad it is and why it should have never happened. I get it, all right? I feel you, man. Cartoon Network should have just stuck to cartoons, but I've always felt different towards the block, honestly. I think the block has some legitimately good and creative shows that could have thrived on another network, whether it be Disney XD or Discovery Kids slash The Hub. I plan on covering some of these shows individually, so I won't get into specifics yet, but one of these shows that I think could have done well somewhere else is the roller coaster game show Brain Rush. Now, this show is actually partially lost media. Episodes 1 through 3 and episodes 5 and 6 are available online somewhere, whereas episode 4 somehow didn't make it out the lost media trenches. If there's anyone out there that for whatever reason was recording Brain Rush back in 2009 and want to be a lost media hero, go ahead and upload it somewhere on the internet. I recommend YouTube because every other episode is already on there, so <laughs> clearly copyright is not an issue. The show premiered on June 20 of 2009 at 8pm during the CN Real block. It ended up getting cancelled extremely early and finished airing its episodes by July 22nd. It was hosted by new girls Lamorne Morris with help from Sarah Carges, and it was filmed in Knott's Berry Farm in Buena Park, California. Basically, Brain Rush was a normal trivia game show with one little change that made it stand out. That being, you had to answer those questions while on a roller coaster. Look. I'm not an expert on game shows or anything, but I'm pretty positive this has never been done before. Do you know how cool of a concept this is? Sure, the questions themselves aren't hard for the most part, but having to answer them while on a roller coaster going 82 miles per hour? That's a little different. Each episode begins with a little monologue from Lamorne talking about how the show works. Co-host Sarah then picks out a contestant from the ride's line. She convinces them to sit down on the ride, then that's when Lamorne sits next to them and tells them that if you choose to sit here, you will be a contestant on the show Brain Rush. Apparently, they have no idea beforehand, but I mean, let's be real, whenever they are told that they are participating in the game show Brain Rush, they always give the super excited reaction like, Really? Really. Oh my god, no way. Yes way. Do you want to play? Oh, yeah. Yeah, let's play then. Let's All right. go. Oh my god, really? Yes, yes, really. Yeah. <laughs> you look stunned. You want to play? Yes. Yeah. Let's play. Try. Oh, are you serious? Ah, I'm so serious. You want to play? Why not? Let's do it. But none of them ever actually ask, what is Brain Rush? I think just a little acting might have been involved in this part. Although, in all fairness to the game show, we don't see a mic on the contestants until after they agree to be on the show. So maybe I'm just wrong. The first roller coaster is the Boomerang. It's 11 stories up, goes 48 miles per hour, and goes down 875 feet of metal. This round of questions is just normal trivia stuff, ranging from sports, animals, and geography. Each question you get right is $25, but because of the speed and the adrenaline that the contestants are experiencing, sometimes their thoughts are all over the place, which leads to moments like this. Which animal is known for building dams? Be stupid. Who or bogus? Paul Blart is a movie about the Clone Wars. I don't know. Be stupid. Is Andre 3000 a rocket ship or a musician? Uh, rocket ship. Be stupid. I, I don't blame this one on adrenaline though. This guy is just legit uncultured. 
One of my biggest problems with the show is the fact that some of the contestants say I don't know instead of just guessing the answer. Especially for the true or bogus questions when there's literally only two answers so you have a 50% chance of being right. Three people get to do this one and whoever acquires the least amount of money is the loser and gets eliminated. This round is the perfect opening round in my opinion. The questions are a bit all over the place when it comes to categories and this particular roller coaster is going the slowest compared to all the other ones. The next ride though, this is where the game takes a very interesting turn. Round 2 is on the silver bullet. This roller coaster goes 55 miles per hour and has a bunch of loops and turns and I'm getting sick just looking at it. On this ride you have two envelopes you can choose from and in each envelope is a game. One game is the regurgitator in which the contestant is read a short story that apparently is just taken from US Weekly while going up the ride. You then have to remember as much from the story as possible while your brain and stomach are twisting and turning up, down, left, right, and around. I would definitely fail this one, I'm not gonna lie. My brain is not equipped for remembering things. Another game you can choose from is Hurling Hangman, where the player looks for three letters while on the ride, and at the end of it, they have to remember the letters for $50 each. Then, they have to use the letters to complete three words in 10 seconds, and each word formed is worth another $50. Creative. Then, you have the last two games, Represent and Streetwise. In Represent, the host tells the player three random words. There are also three random pictures around the park that the contestant must also keep an eye out for. After the ride, the player can list any of the words or pictures for $50 each. Then, in Streetwise, Lamorne tells the contestant five letters of the alphabet during the ride, kind of like Hurling Hangman. Where this game differs though is that at the end of the ride, the player is given the five correct letters and must unscramble them and use them to form a slang word based on the clue from Lamorne. If they do it within 30 seconds, the player wins another $50. Although I listed four games, only two are playable and they switch them up every episode. This part of the show is definitely what earns its name. Most people can't even function on roller coasters, like this guy. What team did the Los Angeles Dodgers play? Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh, 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 oh my God. But having to remember all of those things while traveling as fast as the roller coasters on this show is no easy task. And it gets even crazier in round three. The last remaining contestant hops on the accelerator. This ride travels 82 miles per hour and shoots you straight up a 90 degree angle. And if you thought that was bad, it gets even trickier. You see, before stepping foot on the coaster, each contestant is offered a decent sized portion of food, ranging from burgers to funnel cake to chili cheese fries. If the person eats it, they gain an additional $100, and man, when I tell you this stuff looks so good, I should not have edited this while I was hungry. So basically, you have four categories, Zap Pow, which is about comic books, Penalty Box, which is all about sports, Watch Out, Watch out. which is all about TV and movies, and Know It All, which is basically just general knowledge. If I was on here, I would probably consider choosing TV and movies, but then I saw they just asked stupid stuff like, can you name previous America's Got Talent winners instead of cool stuff? Like how many episodes are there of Wally Gator? <coughs> 52. So instead, I would choose Zapal because I'm pretty sure I know more about superheroes than anyone in their production team from Brain Rush, considering they can't even spell Tobey Maguire's name right. You get $50 for each thing that you name, so there's really no limit to how much money you can win. The only limit is your brain. I'd be walking out like Mr. Krabs if they asked me how many members of the Justice League I could name. Oh my god, um, all of them. After the ride is over, the contestant is presented with a tough choice. They can either A, leave right then and there with all the money they have racked up, or B, go on the ride again and answer one more question that will double the amount. But if you get it wrong, you'll not only lose out on the opportunity to double the money, but your pre-existing amount that you've earned will get cut in half. So, let's see what kind of questions they ask. Okay, Vin, here's your question. List as many members of the Fantastic Four as you can. Bro, are you kidding me? Dude, I was literally made for this show, man. Come on, man, that's too easy. The winner then gets to go on the roller coaster one last time and then gets presented with their cash. Rinse, repeat, and the process starts all over again. Well, only for six episodes, but you get the point. And uh, yeah, that's Brain Rush for you. Out of all the CN Real shows, I think this one had the most potential. 
For starters, Lamorne Morris is an excellent host who has very good comedic timing. He knows when to bring the energy, but he also knows when he needs to be more relaxed, especially when talking to contestants right before the ride. The show's concept, as I stated before, is insanely creative in my opinion. There was nothing like it before it, and I haven't seen a game show that was able to replicate its uniqueness since. With a few tweaks, I think it could have honestly done well on another network that perhaps already had a few game shows under its belt. Apparently the show was cancelled due to extreme negative reviews from critics and audiences, but I mean, is there really anything that bad in it? I honestly don't think so. I don't even have any real problems with the show other than the fact that I didn't get a chance to be on it. It's a silly stupid game show with silly stupid moments. It's never boring in my opinion and the way it's designed leads to plenty of at home audience participation moments. I mean, I was screaming at my TV plenty of times when people didn't answer certain questions correctly. Brain Rush was cool man, and I'm kinda sad it ended up on Cartoon Network because had it gone somewhere else, it could have easily had more than 6 episodes. But for now, I guess this show will just remain in a special place in my heart right next to MTV's Silent Library. Here's what I want you guys to do. I want you to go on YouTube and watch some episodes of Brain Rush, form your own opinion of the show, and let me know in the comments below what you think. If you liked the video and want to see more videos like this in the future, don't forget to subscribe, share, and leave a like. As always, I'm Mr. Nostalgia, and I'm out for now. Peace.